There has been a lot of Kage during the duration of Naruto's history. The Hidden Stone currently has the least amount ever, with their Suche Kage currently being their fifth, and Konoha has the most ever, with Naruto being their seventh. So with over 30 possible options, it's a bit weird to us that we don't know a lot of the Kages who have served, especially when some of them were incredibly powerful. But out of all of these possible Kage, who are the strongest from each village? This isn't strongest Kage ever because the top four on that list are all Hokages and that's a bit boring. No, today we are going to be talking about the strongest Kage and therefore by extension, the strongest person from each of the five great ninja villages in Naruto. But before we get to talking about the strength of some people you may have never even heard about, make sure you go ahead and like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell because if you like learning obscure things about anime that maybe you wouldn't have otherwise you're gonna love it here so remember what i said earlier about all those kages that have existed but we don't know a whole lot about yes so because of that there's gonna be maybe some holes and rationale in terms of power scaling here stick with me i'll try and make it as clear as possible at the end of the day we are scaling off things that we've seen and that we know not based off guesstimations so let's start with something that's relatively non-controversial here but there might be some differing opinions the strongest suche kage of all time in this conversation there's only really two options those being inoki and Mu. And the thing is, in terms of skill set, they're almost identical. Both of them possess the Keke Tota of dust release and the ability to use super lightweight boulder on themselves to fly. They can also use super lightweight boulder on other things in order to change the gravitational pull on them, making them either lighter or heavier. But there's one area that separates them that makes Mu stronger than Anoki and that is his ability to use water chakra release. Well, and then obviously there's also the fact that Mu was one of the most talented sensor ninjas in the history of Naruto. Mu was able to detect chakra from somebody kilometers away. He was so talented in sensing, he could sense the difference between siblings in their chakra natures. On top of that, he was so talented in detection that he could use the detection of chakra with his quick reflexes to avoid attacks that other Kage level threats couldn't. But let's go back to the water chakra release that he's able to use. He is able to use water chakra release to mask his presence and make himself invisible making him borderline undetectable to anybody he doesn't want to see him on top of that he was able to use all five chakra natures and the keke tota of dust release which is a combination of earth wind and fire chakra releases and for those of you who don't know dust release creates a geometrical shape that can expand and completely destroys on a cellular level anything that falls within that geometrical shape on top of this mu had also mastered yang release which allowed him if he was hit by a deadly attack to split his body in half well half isn't the right word he was actually able to separate himself into two different copies of himself in order to avoid fatal blows albeit at the cost of half of his power i mean come on what is scarier than that a man who can turn invisible find you anywhere you are and then delete you on a cellular level but since we're talking about mu we should talk about the person who is considered to be exactly i mean it literally exactly as strong as mu why do i say this person is as strong as mu well that's because this person killed mu but was also killed by mu and that would be the second mizokage gengetsu hozuki gengetsu was considered the strongest shinobi of his time in the hidden mist village and obviously there is an argument you could make for yagura being the strongest mizokage of all time but i think gengetsu is a proper choice for a couple of the reasons i'm about to list let's take a peek at gengetsu's feats obviously defeating mu is one of them but when he is reincarnated and the fourth division is trying to take him on he has his sentience about him. He is telling the fourth division how to defeat him, and he still beats an almost entire battalion by himself. There's also the fact that he was able to break out of Gara's ceiling, which we've only ever seen Orishiki and tailed beasts do. He was proficient in water, fire, lightning, earth, yin, and yang chakra releases. And if the last name Hozuki sounds familiar to you, that's because he is technically a predecessor to Suegitsu Hozuki, aka Orochimaru's little water boy. And as a member of the Hozuki clan, he's able to liquefy parts of his body to avoid physical attacks or even increase the size of his limbs 
to increase his power and punching and kicking. On top of this, since his body is liquid, he can use it to shoot off water bullets at high velocities that are able to pierce even Gara's ultimate sand defense. And don't even get me started on the fact that he can literally limitlessly explode. You heard that, right? He creates a water clone veils it in a thin layer of oil the water heats up as he controls it with his water chakra release and then that clone explodes but as the water explodes from the clone it condenses into hail and reforms the clones therefore making an endless cycle of exploding clones that can clear out entire battlefields and then of course there's his clan summon which he uses in conjunction with his yin release in order to release a hallucinogenic genjutsu inducing steam this genjutsu inducing steam is so powerful and so realistic that even as he is explaining to people how to get out of it they get trapped in it he is insanely powerful and i understand that yagura is also insanely powerful but yagura never got to see adulthood essentially Yagura's abilities are basically that of any perfect Jinchuriki between mini tailed beast bombs, complete transformations, and the ice mirror that he was able to reflect all jutsus with. Outside of that, unfortunately, we don't see much in the way of scaling for Yagura, so I have to give this one to Gengetsu. But since we're talking about perfect Jinchuriki as Kage's, that brings us to our next entry on the list, Gara. I know what you're saying, I know what you're saying! But they said the second Kaze Kage was the strongest Kaze Kage. They also said Hiruzen was the strongest Hokage, okay? Sometimes they lie. Also, technically, they just said the Kaze Kage was the strongest shinobi of the hidden sand in his lifetime. He got killed by Saucery. Saucery who lost to Sakura and Granny Chio. Obviously, the idea of iron sand is very intimidating. It's way harder than regular sand. But at the end of the day, come on, Saucery. Even when he was brought back as a puppet, he still technically lost to Granny Chio and Sakura. And obviously both of those people were very powerful. I'm not doing Sakura slash Granny Chio erasure here, but come on, we're talking about the strongest Kages from every village. No way in hell is Gara losing that 1v1 against Sasori. So let's do it. Let's talk about Gara. Gara's feats are probably the most out of any non-leaf village person that we know of. Let's one, take into the fact that he was made the commander in chief of the allied shinobi forces as the youngest Kage in the current five. He was bred to be the Hidden Sand's ultimate weapon. He holds the record for the tuning exam in Konoha of all the places. Even after losing Shukaku in the Akatsuki arc, he is able to then seal and fight multiple reincarnated Edo Tensai, which means unlimited chakra other kages and win he beats rasa he beats gengetsu he beats mu he beats them all on top of that being a jinchuriki he, he had a massive well of chakra but here's the thing even after he loses shukaku we never see a hitch in how much sand he can control and use to attack and defend which means that his own natural well of chakra must be astounding this is most likely because he was an uzumaki video about that right here and you want to know the craziest part about gara that people don't talk about after his fight against Rock Lee, he realized that his taijutsu was so lacking that he reached out to Shira, the seven heavenly breaths guy who fights Rock Lee, in order to teach him taijutsu. It was then much later that Kinshiki Otsutsuki says that his taijutsu abilities are on par with both Sasuke, Darui, and Naruto. So it doesn't matter if you get through the sand, you're just gonna get these hands. But since we're talking about the sand that protects him, he literally has his dead mother's soul in a sentient mound of sand that protects him from all punches, kicks, projectiles, everything without him having to use chakra or weave hand signs. He has earth, lightning, and wind chakra releases in that he can use those in order to either lighten his sand so he can attack faster or increase its density using his magnet release. And since we're talking about his magnet release, we found out in Garahid in his light novel that he inherited a magnet release from his father, Rasa, that he can use to increase the density of the chakra in his sand to bolster his defenses. For a long time, people actually thought that this magnet release is what allowed him to control sand, but we found out it was actually his connection with Shukaku, and Shukaku liked him so much that after being extracted from him, he still granted Gar the ability to control sand. But since we're talking about his sand, let's talk about his sand. 
Gar is able to accomplish one of the most powerful Fuen Jutsus in the entirety of the show with his Grand Sand Mausoleum. Using this technique, he's able to hold Chukaku down. He's able to hold Orishiki for a matter of hours. That's a full-blooded Otsutsuki. Let's not forget the bit when he was 13 years old and he covered an entire battlefield while fighting Kimimaru in sand and then proceeded to sand burial the entire battlefield. He can make eyes out of sand that can shoot off into the sky, fly around, and act as reconnaissance drones. And if none of that works and you somehow get to him, he can wear sand armor that prevents him from taking damage if you hit him. Oh, and if he fell asleep as a teenager, Shukaku would take over his body and probably kill and destroy anything near him. So yeah, I'm gonna say he probably beats the second Kaze Kage in a fight. Now a full-grown Shinki, that's where things start to get interesting. But we'll leave that for another video. For the moment, let's move on to the strongest non-Hokage Kage of all time. And that would be A. Which one, you ask? The third one. For those of you who don't know, every single Raikage until Daroi was named A. So we're talking about the third Raikage. I love this man with a burning passion. The third Raikage was known as the perfect shield because he had a lightning cloak he could put over himself that was impenetrable to almost every single kind of attack. We're talking Susano level defense. This man fought an army of 10,000 shinobi by himself. And guess what? He did it for three days straight until he died of chakra depletion. That's right. 10,000 shinobi weren't enough to kill him. The only thing that did was him running out of energy. If you don't think that's crazy, how about the time he had to 1v1 Giyuki, the Eight Tails, because Blue Bee, the Jinchuriki of Giyuki, the Eight Tails, before Killer Bee, couldn't control Giyuki and lost him. Usually, the Raikage would have a group of people, including his son, the fourth Raikage, also a to back him up in these fights but that group wasn't there so he had to fight the second strongest tailed beast on earth by himself and it ended in a draw where they both collapsed exhausted and if the perfect shield thing wasn't enough for you he was fast enough to dodge roshan shurikens and was considered one of the fastest ninjas alive the only thing that ever hurt this man was himself when he was using a lightning lariat of which he is able to make infinitely more powerful by reducing the amount of fingers that he is pointing out and he tripped and stabbed himself giving him the massive scar that he wears on his chest but lightning releases weren't all that he knew even though it was all that he needed he could also use fire and earth chakra releases but since we're talking about lightning let's also talk about the jutsu he created that he passed along to darui called black lightning black lightning is an incredibly powerful powerful lightning ability that can be shot in directions that incapacitate massive amounts of enemies simultaneously. Oh, and remember that jutsu I talked about where he reduces the amount of fingers in order to create the perfect spear as they cause it? They say it is so powerful it could cut off all of Giyuki's tails simultaneously. But since we're talking about tails, we might as well get to our last entry on the list. And did you guess it? Did you guess who the strongest Hokage of all time is? I'll give you a second. It's Naruto. Do I even have to go over Naruto's feats? I feel like it would be much better served of both of our times for me to just go over his abilities. One, by the time that he is a Hokage, he has the entirety of Kurama in him, not just half of it like he's had in his entire life. Oh, by the way, Kurama is the strongest of all the tailed beasts. In fact, Kurama is stronger than all the other tailed beasts combined. He has all five chakra natures, yin and yang, lava, boil, and magnet release. Where do you get all these Keke Genkai? Well, when he took all of the tail beasts inside of him, just how Gara continued to be able to use his sand after Shukaku was pulled from him, all of the tail beasts were like, hey, just take the Keke Genkai that we have. So he got Kukio's boy release, he got Son Goku's lava release, and he got Shukaku's magnet release. And what does he do with that myriad of jutsus? Well, he kind of just adds them to raw sand guns. But adding that to a Rasengan is actually a lot more powerful than we think. Because a lava style Rasen Shuriken literally cut the divine tree in half, and a magnet release Rasengan was able to hold Madara still. He has officially sealed one god and killed two of them by sealing Kaguya, murdering Momoshiki, and then literally 1v1 boxing the strongest person we've ever seen on the show. 
Ishiki Ototsuki. How did he accomplish boxing Ishiki Ototsuki? Well, that's a little thing called Baryon Mode, where him and Karama expend their literal chakra life force like nuclear reaction and use that to raise their chakra temperature to a boiling point that causes his physical abilities, speed, reflexes, strength, all of that to be maxed out beyond the max. To quote Yami Sukihiro from Black Clover, Naruto pushed past his limits. Oh, and if that wasn't enough, he's also the reincarnation of Ashiro Tsutsuki and was gifted Six Paths Chakra by Hagoromo, his kind of pseudo daddy. And what is Six Paths Chakra, you ask? I'm very happy you did that. It is literally just an extra battery of chakra, incredibly powerful chakra, that Naruto can tap into whenever he wants. And even now that Kurama is gone, he still has it. And since we're talking about chakra, he probably has the largest chakra reserve we've ever seen in the show, being able to share chakra with almost the entire shinobi allied forces in the war arc. He has so much chakra, Momoshiki literally pulled it out of him for six hours and didn't even get half of it. On top of that, he's considered the best taijutsu fighter probably in the entire leaf outside of maybe Rock Lee and Mike Guy. But don't worry, if he somehow runs out of that enormity of chakra, he's also a perfect sage, being able to re fill his chakra with Senjutsu strictly by having a shadow clone go pull it in somewhere else, disappear, and give him all the chakra. In fact, in Shikamaru Shinden, Shikamaru's light novel, Shikamaru stated that Naruto alone could destroy an entire continent. He is literally nuclear deterrence. But if we want to have even more fun with Naruto, he also has a Hashirama cell right arm after the Valley of the End fight against Sasuke. And here's what's really fun about this. A Hashirama cell arm means that he should A, be able to use wood release from that, but B, he also has water and earth and yin and yang chakra releases, which has been proven to be able to give you wood release based on the fact that Moegi has access to wood release in one of the data books. So two separate ways Naruto would be able to access wood release. Why doesn't he use it? Oh, because he would be terrifying, that's why. Oh, and not to mention as a Hokage, he's also mastered every single jutsu of the leaf, flying Raijin included. Only problem is he doesn't need flying Raijin because he's already so fast as is. And that's it. The strongest Kage from every single hidden village. Do you agree with my list? Do you like the points that I brought up? If you do, please tell me in the comments. If you don't, just like the video. Keep on moving. And since we're talking about liking the video, make sure you please, for me, like this video, subscribe to the page, and hit that noti bell because I may not be much of a power scaler, but I am willing to tell you who is the strongest and who isn't. Listen, I'm not saying that we shouldn't take people in Naruto's words for truth, but both the second Kaze Kage and Hiruzen were said to be the strongest Kages of their time. And they both died to people from their village.